Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners, macabre murders and captivating crimes from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the Delta that we tell. And it's episode 183. 183. Speeding through them. And you're back, Nick. I am. I'm here and I'm alive. You're alive. Or either that or Emma has perfected her impression of you. I'm not Emma, no, absolutely. (laughs) Do you want to do an impression of Emma, seeing as you have not shut up about her impression of you? What do you mean I have not shut up? I've mentioned it once. (laughs) You've mentioned it twice. Okay, so that's that's not shut up about it. There's more than you would normally do. I've said it twice. (laughs) Yes, but you said it at a funeral, you know. (laughs) In the middle of a meeting. (laughs) With with a loud hailer. (laughs) So, So, are there any notes on last week's episode? What do you think of the format? Yeah, so Emma has thoughts about me, apparently. (laughs) Apparently. That's all I am. But we missed you. We missed you <laughs> terribly. And thank you to everyone who sent lovely messages to Indeed. Nick and expressed their missing of him, but also <laughs> was very supportive of uh, our little extra weird episode with Emma last week, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm good. How, glad you enjoy yourself. How, how, how are you, Nick? Uh, well, I'm, yes, I am recovered. I am recovered and now full of paint. Full of paint? Full of paint. Just everywhere is just like paint. It's like, right. I've scrubbed and I've scrubbed and there's still paint. I uh, feel like in a sort of Lady Macbeth sort of way. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> so. Out damn dark blue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's, oh, it's, much, nice. it's much like that. Um, <laughs> Not the one with the drama or anything. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> don't know what you mean. You're deeply immersed in the great flatting. I'm going to just the call great it that. Flattening. The great flattening. <laughs> Flat, flattening. The flattening great. sounds worse. No. This is true. It does look sensational. It's getting there. It's getting there. So I think we'll try and do some videos over there soon to show people the beauty of what it is. Well, when this comes out, there will be... I'll have two days before all the furniture arrives. (laughs) <laughs> that is my world at the moment is, oh, is, is painting and masking things and then going should I got paint on the carpet ah! <laughs> have you got any paint on the carpet yet a little bit <gasps> Nick a little bit but I managed to scrub it out so I think it's fine oh do you want to use my spot cleaner maybe I'll see what it looks like I've got like a more. portable spot cleaner carpet cleaner guys this is fascinating it's really stuff exciting oh no it is really exciting it really cleans everything up so I've got, got all the skirting board done not a drop paint in the door <laughs> I'm just so so glad it wasn't me. <laughs> because just the fear. It's a genuine fear that I was like, I'm going to drop paint on it. And then Nick will just use that against me for the rest of my life. Oh, gotcha. now Absolutely. you've done it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Mm. Yeah, but I don't. It's fine. <laughs> you do it. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. I paint gets everywhere. <laughs> it's all planned. I must do it. If I do it, then you go into a darkened room and just go, I can't see you for yes, a few Yes, just months. leave now. Just, just, just leave, okay? Good. Better well, for both of us. Just, just leave. <laughs> any poisonings this week? A bit too busy. Too, busy. too much painting, too much cleaning, too mm. much scrubbing. Mm. Yeah, so no, no, no time for any of that shenanigans. Scrub, I mean, once I'm, I'm looking forward to being a bit more relaxed and a bit more be able to plan out the point things a bit more. <laughs> so I get in there. Oh, I've got a nice place to sit mm. in my comfy chair and and make a proper list. Yeah. Um, of over the past few months, <laughs> the people there are people who have fucked me off. You've, um, put, you've put your quill in your paper and exactly, parchment into storage. So, exactly. All, all my list-making apparatus are in storage. <laughs> so so uh, next week I get it all back and then the lists can commence. I think we're all looking forward to that. My test tubes are in storage. And everything, so. <laughs> These are your testicles are in storage. There, no, no, they? I keep those with me. <laughs> <laughs> for emergencies. I keep, I keep those close for in, uh, emergency just, use only. In case company comes around. <laughs> Always have a testicle or two upon yeah, your just, person. Just in case. Just in, you never know. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Well, speaking of always having your testicles upon you and painting them, you know Paint, what? Yes. Making them shiny for Christmas. I think it is time for us to thank our delicious Patreon subscribers. Yes. Well done, Ashley Hart and your testicles. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> so Ashley thank you for you. To Christy Pfeiffer. I hope that's right. Morgan McGann. To D with Tiffany. Yeah, with Tiffany, like that, Amelia. Francis the Noble. Francis the Noble, that's a good one. Atomic Dog Mum. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> there's a lot going on there. I'm worried for the dog in this scenario. <laughs> May Mama. And lastly, to KK. Ooh, not the third K, very important. No, no, just just two K, K-A-Y, K. Oh, I like it. Oh, yeah. KK. Cunning. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a like, like a villain in a cool novel. Something like Will <laughs> Self would write or something. You know? <laughs> it's very good. But yes, many, many new patrons this week. So thank you very much, darlings. Thank you, you beautiful, beautiful Patreon subscribers. We had fun on Patreon this week. Mm. Yes, it was your story. Do it you was. It? Yes, there was a person and a river. Oh, there was a person and a river. There was a person and a river mm. and a sailor. 
many sailors. sailors. Many sa- well, possibly the greatest serial killer possibly of the, the last hundred years. Yes. If any of the stories if, about if it any is to be of the hyperbole is to be believed, mm. or maybe not. And also we had our latest episode of The Case Files of PC Morris, which is the monthly extra episode that we do for our cyanide connoisseurs. We have a whole big backlog of lovely packs for the cyanide connoisseurs. They are all going to you. They shall be winging their way to you. If you want to know what the hell we're talking about, please consider joining us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash The Poisoners Cabinet, where you get extra episodes every single week, as well as lots of bonus content and lovely, frivolous, juicy, delicious things. The frivolous, juicy, delicious things. Exactly, yeah. I want some of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do I get them? <laughs> well, maybe we should do... Well, we'll do more house stuff on there and maybe do some Christmas baking. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Maybe make a, like a really long, drawn-out recipe for Christmas <laughs> <laughs> for no reason. Right, okay. <laughs> a six-hour goose. Yes. <laughs> that will taste bad. <laughs> This well, is my ham that I'm going to boil for three days. You will watch it, all of it. <laughs> Keep an it's eye on live. it. It's live. It's quite soothing, I bet. Yeah, you know, a watched ham. Mm. A watched ham never boils. Oh, that's right. As the, as the famous saying goes. <laughs> Someone was doing that. Going, a watched ham. No- oh, no, it just did. Oh, oh, right. Well, Nick, are you ready? Not ready. To drink cocktails and talk about poison? Mm. Or we could drink poison and talk about cocktails. Oh, we could. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many options. So much delight. So many, so many things we can do. <laughs> so many possibilities in the world. <laughs> so much to fill up our diaries with. <laughs> Should we go with the first one? Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll go with the first one. No. It seems it seems repetitive and obvious though. I've... If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, this it. is very true. Mm. This is very true. Drinking. One day the poison. One day the poison. And then questions will be asked. <laughs> but not today. <laughs> Let's go with the first one. Hooray, hooray, hooray. It is my story again this week. For the 12th week running. For the 12th week running. <laughs> and we can't, we can't, we can't possibly have a story without a cocktail in hand. As you know, dear listeners, every week we choose a secret ingredient that is inspired by the tale that we tell. And it will flavor a cocktail of the week. My story, so my pick. And this week's secret ingredient is a scream. Mm. Now, when you messaged me with that, you on your message, you said the scream. Oh, I might have done that. And then when I saw it on the Instagram, it was like a scream. So, mm-hmm. A scream. A scream. The scream. The Our scream. scream. We a- scream together. <laughs> <laughs> he, she, it screams. It screams, yes. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a scream. Just a general screaming in general. I sent you a lot of stuff. You did. You did. <laughs> Most of which I went, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't. Well, a scream feels like many possibilities there. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few. Yes. And there's, there's a, a few, few that are leaping to mind where I go, has he actually done that? that <laughs> have, I, have I actually done that? Yeah. Have I actually done that? So with the scream yeah. as your ingredient. Yeah. What have you come up with? Well, what was, what? I'm intrigued, but what, what do you, what was the one you thought, have I actually done that? Well, there is the the old screaming multiple orgasm. There's often like a multiple orgasm or a screaming orgasm or some of that. But that was like a like a shitty cocktail ish in the a shitty cocktail ish. Well, I guess in the nineties, just so you've got something stupid to say to the bar. Just go first to fun of this, the bar the barman. And go, I want to scream an orgasm. I want to scream it multiple orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I want sex on the beach. Yeah, yeah, sex on the beach. And Debbie wants chlamydia. But enough of that. <laughs> oh my god, we're mad. <laughs> and I have no idea what's in them. Right. Uh, but back to the cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Wouldn't know. Also, screaming multiple orgasm sounds like a lot of. I don't know where work. you get the multiple bit from. Well, I mean, people can have multiple orgasms. Yeah, but no, in the name of a cocktail. No, I've heard that. That's oh, what it was called back in the day. Um, because screaming wasn't enough. Has to be multiple. Right. Some guy wrote that and just went, yeah. no, no, put multiple in there because I could totally do that with a girl. <laughs> <laughs> If you're screaming the whole time, you wouldn't want there to be multiple. You'd be like, okay, no, you've had enough now. now. Shush now. It's quiet time. <laughs> Could you just do it quietly, but also validate me? <laughs> but right. well, there we go. So, that's yeah, so they the, the that's history of the screaming multiple orgasm sounds, in cocktail form. Sounds delightful. Mm. Sounds lovely. <laughs> well, yeah. what have you come up with? We're having a screaming orgasm. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if you would do it. I mean, were there many other There's a, there's a few screams? out there. There's a few sort of scream... Or sort of general sort of slashery, screamy, shouty oh, nice. sort of things. Yes. Um, so then I did things all that scream, like, film, slasher. Yeah, like ghost face. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, all that sort of things. I looked down that lot, that route and I thought, fuck it. That was screaming music. So <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever had one. No. The drink. I have no um, idea what's in and it. And I had no idea what was in it. And I looked at it and I thought, actually, that's all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, so we're going with that. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm expe- well, we all have high hopes. We always have, we always have high hopes. Screaming all <laughs> 
Does that mean it's a good one? Well, that's that's a very good point. It's <laughs> a very good point. Like, yeah, well, I can only orgasm if someone is screaming, which is less good. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I have my weighted blanket, yeah. and my window open about three inches, and someone needs to be screaming and so I can get just, off. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's less ideal. Well, <laughs> Oh, the jokes now that will come from people are writing them already. Okay, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. <laughs> I think it is high time for us to go into the poisonous captain kitchen and what happens in there happens. What happens happens. But we'll shake up a storm, so we'll see you in a minute. We'll see you in a minute. And we're back. Hello. So, Nick. Yeah. Have we got a screaming orgasm? Screaming orgasms screaming going on. Screaming orgasm. I was. I just caught my foot in the fridge. <laughs> Do you know what that's from? No. Black books. You know when Fran does the phone call to you, Matt? Oh, yes. <laughs> and then she's like, Fran, my God, are you all right? No, I just caught my foot in the fridge. <laughs> Should I come, Fran? Should I? Should I? <laughs> so the, ooh, the screaming orgasm. Yeah. Never had one of these. No idea what's in it. No. But I'll tell you what. It looks, oh, I don't know why I'm saying this. Creamy. Look creamy. It looks creamy. <laughs> creamy, creamy. Okay, so, well, I think there's nothing else for it but no, to dive in. Just give I'm it sure a go. it'll go very well with the fizz that we started yeah, off with. Yeah, I'm here. Well, uh, it smells of booze. Mm. Hey. Hurrah. Okay, well, okay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, okay. I mean, Ooh. yeah. No? Um, boozy, creamy. Boozy, boozy, creamy goodness. Boozy, creamy goodness. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's very nice. There's, there's a lot going on in there. Yeah. Oh, I could drink that uh, quite a lot of that, yeah. actually. And, and it's also, it is that sort of Christmassy drink. It does have that yeah. sort of Christmassy vibe, that sort of, I'm going to decorate the tree with yeah. terrible, <laughs> terrible things after 12 of this. It does. Okay, well, I'm going to go on a limb. Does it have Baileys in it? It does have Baileys Yay! in it, yeah. Yay! Well, I'm glad I stocked up on Baileys as well. well. And I had a Baileys earlier. <laughs> there we go. I was writing and Baileys I made a coffee. Baileys all the way. And I was like, I'm putting Baileys in it. I was in a real mood earlier. I was like, I'm putting Baileys in my coffee. <laughs> oh, great. So I am ready for so, Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. Good, but you're dead right, though. When yeah. I'm doing decorations, I never drink Baileys. Any other no, time absolutely. of the year. Yep. Never. Got to get a bottle of Baileys. But yeah, have to pour a Baileys and then decorate the house. <laughs> it's Christmas. Anyway, back is... to back to this. Back, back to the back to the orgasming. Yep. Which you often say during. I do. <laughs> it's like, oh yes, they're orgasming. Let's continue that. None of this chat. <laughs> None of this chat. Where was I? Oh yes. Hello. <laughs> or is it Baileys? <laughs> so what else could be in it? Is something is there cream in it? There's cream in there. Oh, there's cream. Oh, yep. creamy, creamy. Okay. Uh... There's lots. Oh, is there? There's a quite there's quite a lot in there. Wow, all right. <laughs> Hence it's... it being a very large drink. Yeah, that's what um, I was wondering. Yeah, it's meant to be served in sort of like a highball with broken ice, like crushed ice. Oh. Uh, I didn't have a highball and I couldn't be asked to crush no, ice. that's fine, that's uh, fine. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll neck this back. Yeah, I'll tumble it with a big old chunk of ice. That'll do just as well. Keep it keep it chilled. Okay, so is there like a cacao in there or something? There's not a cacao, no. Kahlua? There is a coffee. Coffee, coffee there liqueur. There is a coffee liqueur in there. Okay, so we've got yep. Baileys, we've got cream, we've got coffee liqueur. Yep. Other things. Other three other things. Three, rum. Nope. D- not gin. No. Vodka. There's vodka. Is there vodka in it? Vodka in it. Bloody hell. Vodka. Okay, two other things. Yep. Bitters. Oh, what am I not thinking of? Um, um, many, many, probably, many, many, many things. Many things. <laughs> many, all I'm thinking is chartreuse. No. <laughs> <laughs> but what the what the what the so glue and the and the vodka and the, the whiskey. You will kick yourself because you'll be like, oh, obviously, it's, uh, that's the sort of thing that goes in these things. Oh, God, so, is something cream? Is there something creamy? There's, there's, well, there's milk. I'll give you that. There's, there's milk in there as well. There's oh, cream, so there's one there's more, one, there's one, more one more boozy thing. thing. Boozy thing. Yeah. Okay. Mm, not cacao. Not coffee. Yeah. With the, the orange. Orange. Le- yeah. uh, uh, shut up. No. <laughs> I mean, I don't taste any orange in there, but I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the hill I'll die on. One love. No. No. Just, no there's not that. go down that route. That no, there's none of that. <laughs> None of that in an orgasm. <laughs> Cold hard liquor, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what that's, that's oh, what you know. Oh no, amaretto. Yes. Oh, oh, really? Yes. Because oh, I taste none of that in there. Oh, ooh, yay. Oh, I love amaretto. Put more yeah, in it. There's dry. Well, what is amaretto? interesting, there is there is equal parts of everything. Seriously? All of those ingredients, there is equal parts of all those ingredients. No. To that. But there are. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. It's a really enjoyable drink. Given how much is in there, all I am tasting is Baileys and milk and cream. Oh, and so I get the coffee. Of, a little bit of the coffee. I get the coffee in there. 
vodka, and I can tell there's vodka in there because there's just a slightly sharper alcohol behind that. The amaretto is lost. Yeah, I'm not getting the amaretto. Because I and I love amaretto, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put more amaretto in there in a minute. Cool. We had one quite similar recently. We did. Ah, oh, it was around your birthday time. It we was. Did. Yeah, I can't remember yeah. what it was, but it was a very similar you put a sort flake of. In it. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I can't um, remember what it was. Either. It was. But that was a, that was a Bailey's creamy mm. thingy-majig. And it is um, nice to have those every now and, and then. Absolutely, every now and again. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And I, I, I'm I, always like, no, no, no. They're actually, they're really nice. Oh, no, they're really <laughs> nice. They're really nice. And you're like, let's have more. And the thing is, you can't have too many of them. Oh, you can. But not in the same way that with some of the hard liquor cocktails. Well, enough, yes. Where we go, let's have another and let's have a third. And when you get to the third, you go... I'm drunk and I I'm going to die tomorrow. Yeah. This will have a very obvious cut off because it is rich. Yes. You'll exactly. go, oh, time to ease off on that. Time Mixing it with something else. <laughs> with the film, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> well, yeah. I like that. They're still a screaming orgasm. That's just that's just disturbing for who, for the people involved. Well, yes. And then there's people. Obviously, there's, there's a crowd <laughs> <laughs> holding up school cards. <laughs> Too, much well Too much screaming. Too much screaming. Not screaming. Yes. Well, it, it was part of that trend, yeah, in, so in the 90s. The, so you can just, say to, just to come up with stupid names to yeah to go to bartenders and look stupid well, like a slippery um, nipple the slippery nipple yeah okay, long hard screw on against the wall or whatever it was called there was, <laughs> there was one like that and then sex on the beach and oh slow comfortable screwing that's the one the yeah slow, long sorry, hard sorry, screw against the wall <laughs> it's going on for a while and it's yeah. relentless yeah <laughs> much like the drink itself <laughs> Okay, I think we've all learned something today. <laughs> Things that no one needs to know. <laughs> well, with the with the screaming orgasms firmly in mm. hand, are you ready for a story? Go on then. Okay, so this week I've got a bit mad doing okay. three main episodes in a row, but I was thinking about all sorts of crimes and came up with some really good stories, but then one of our listeners messaged... A big shout out to lovely Paul Roos, lovely listeners from Belgium, sent through a story. And I thought, this is great, actually. This opens up a whole area that we haven't explored before. So I thought, let's delve into crimes we've not done. So today, we're going to talk about one of the greatest crimes of all. Mm. The stealing of art. Oh. The old art heist. The old heist. The old heist. But is it on the train? It's not on a train. Well, I don't care. <laughs> I only you? deal with heists on a train. You only deal with heists on a train. You do the train robberies. I do the art robberies. Fine. As we go. So today we have we have a triptych of stories. Uh, you see what I did there? Ooh, art reference. Art, art thing. That was art an art thing. thing, that was. There will be some references to art things in this. Don't worry, guys. It's not going to be art history because I don't know. <laughs> Probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> the heists and the thefts. Of some of the most famous paintings mm. of all time, and also one story that I didn't know about, which again was sent in, of the most thieved piece of art ever. Okay. Is, Love a thievery. Yeah, you picture art heist. But what do you think of when you picture art heist? Oh, someone, someone terribly dashing in the sort mm. of, yeah, absolutely. Very suave. So you're thinking film, TV? Uh, absolutely, yes. So someone coming down on a rope. Or sort of, <laughs> in, or in sort of like an entrapment sort of way. Lots of lasers. Wow, okay. you went straight to entrapment. Someone you know, sort of fleeing just, themselves in a cartwheelie sort of way. Just bypass Thomas Crown Affair and Lupin and all I, those I, classy I, things. Thomas Crown Affair, love it. <laughs> Brilliant film. Yeah, do you love it? I love it. Yeah. Original or remake? I, I haven't seen the original, I must admit. I've seen the re- I've only seen the remake. Mm. The Pierce Brosnan one. Oh yeah, you like Pierce Brosnan. And I do, and I, I do like that a great deal. Yeah, yeah. And you um, like Lupin? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, That's like a good a one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So There's all sorts of like Ocean's mm, Eleven as well. Many, many art that. thieveries out there. So you picture all these suave, sophisticated, you know, highly intricately planned mm. heists. Turns out that doesn't happen a lot. No, I think it's more <laughs> smash and grab really, isn't it? <laughs> it's more, ah, <laughs> running through. Now today, obviously, you have to put all of your knowledge and your, your, your picturing of any time you've been to an art gallery of how high the security is. Because it's phenomenal these days, and all credit to, you know, the people who go, I want to protect these hundreds of millions of pounds worth of things. Yes, maybe I will put up some bulletproof glass. And mainly, I've you, learned... also, you've got to fight your way through just a boil throwing orange paint all over the place. Well, that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> some of them have just now, the amount of attacks yeah. on public works of art have been uh, incredible. So we are going to tell a few tales. I always like to tell one I think is one of the greatest crimes of all, is that time I went to Bologna... <laughs> And was forced, forced, hmm, booked onto a 
cool sort of tour of like look at the hidden messages in da vinci's paintings so da vinci code mm. style thing and went up into a tower at basilica mm. in bologna beautiful building went upstairs and then for about two and a half hours with some other people were trapped in this unair conditioned room with a guy with reproductions of paintings and not even like these are the official prints. This is someone else has drawn <laughs> these paintings and him going, but look, look what Da Vinci was doing. This bush looks like a face. It was like, Da Vinci didn't fucking paint that. This is mental. Some guy going, ah, everything is linked and don't get vaccinated. You know, that sort of thing. So, Sounds great. Yeah. So that that is the, uh, the greatest art crime of all. <laughs> but let's start with a really famous one. Okay. Most famous painting of all time. What would you say? <sighs> Mona Lisa. It's the Mona Lisa. Yeah. The Mona Lisa. Now, did you know the Mona Lisa was stolen? I did know that. Oh, did you? I did. Tell me. I know, I know nothing else. <laughs> uh, but I know, I know it has been stolen in the past. Um, she was stolen in 1911. 1911, Da Vinci's masterpiece, that enigmatic smile, that bountiful bosom. <laughs> After Da Vinci painted it in the 1500s, uh, lived in various king's bedrooms. So Da Vinci mm. is Italian by birth, but obviously worked in France. It ended up in the hands of various French kings, ended up in their bedrooms, ended up in the Palace of Versailles. Emma's favourite crush at the moment, Napoleon, mm. had it in his room for a time being. But then it ended up in the Louvre. And, and to this day, it remains. And there it is. Except for a small, small period <laughs> of time. And this is the shorter of the stories, but it's fun. Now, in 1911, the painting really wasn't as famous as it is today. No. It was known to be one of the masterpieces, mm. you know, one of the greatest paintings. It was studied and revered, but really in terms of popularity and tourists, not so much. People would wander into the Louvre and bring their sketchbooks and their easels and just try and recreate them and study for a while. No one, no one minded. It was fine. So on the 22nd of August in 1911, one amateur artist, a painter, what bustled in, bustled in with his easel and lots and lots of paints, kind of person who's probably really annoying, <laughs> settles down in front of the Mona Lisa, looks up and she's not there. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Just fine. Paintings move. Yeah, because... it's probably out for cleaning or something or other. Yeah. In this case, photography. Yeah. In this case, there were lots of photographs being taken, and the visitor goes, "Okay, fine, fair, fair enough. You know, I'll, I'll ask the guard. I'll wait. Like, how long is it going to mm. be? Because I, I want to get this done. I really think I'm I on can the schedule here. Recreate it. Goes up to the guard and says, "Yeah, how long the photographer is going to be? Going, That's fine. I'll go and check. Comes back like, yeah, the photographers don't have it. <laughs> like, right." Where is the Mona Lisa? Who, who, who does have it then? Who, who does have it? And while the Mona Lisa isn't as famous at the time, inside it's like... It's still a, it's, it's still a big deal. Isn't it not even his Mona Lisa? Yeah. Why doesn't anyone have it? <laughs> no, someone has walked in and just taken it off the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Now, well, overnight, three men went into the Louvre at the end of Sunday... They all crammed themselves into a supply closet in their various positions and snuggled up for the night, <laughs> stayed there frozen, <laughs> waited till everyone left, then went out and took the Mona Lisa off the wall. Now, she was behind a glass case, but it mm. wasn't the bulletproof glass. Well, it wouldn't have been in 1911. <laughs> oh, interesting. When was bulletproof glass invented? Uh, that I don't know, but I, I imagine <laughs> it was after 1911. Hmm. I could be entirely wrong. Perhaps it was 1736. Before, before bullets. <laughs> before bullets. Before, before bullets. Going, we've, we've, got, we've got this glass. But <laughs> Whoever invented what bullets we, was going, what do we do with it? <laughs> I feel like I want to protect myself at all times. Now I've invented bullets. <laughs> Interesting but, uh, side thing. We'll look that up in a bit. But no, it doesn't have bulletproof glass. Um, and removed, no fancy lasers. No fancy lasers, unfortunately. No. Yeah. No one is sliding under them no with a No secret. Shot. Pressure plates and things that shoot arrows at people. No, no, it's not Indiana Jones. No, <laughs> the Louvre weirdly isn't like that. No boulders. <laughs> no boulders. If you stay there a minute past closing time, just wiped out. That's how they get the next tour group through. <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that. <laughs> if you've ever been, have you been to the Louvre? I can't say I have. No. No, I've not been and would love to, but know from very many people who speak about it. And again, if you see those pictures online of how yeah. small how small it is she's and tiny that you're about 400 foot away yeah because, because people stand there and then have to get up close yeah. and then are jostling and like wanting to take selfies and everything like that and and the Mona Lisa is tiny yeah it's not she's not a biggie but it's so easy for mm. someone after they like pile out of the closet all fall out at once and then they just take the painting wait for things to open in the morning looking like workmen well exactly you, know? you got a high-vis vest on 
you can get away with whatever the fuck you like. So they didn't have bulletproof cloth, but they had high vis vests. Yeah. In or, a, or a jacket that says workman in French. <laughs> 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 so. Nothing to see here. Yeah. It was tattooed. <laughs> so on I don't face. think they had little eye mask and swag. <laughs> <laughs> That's them. what they were in the closet for ages. They put on all the different costumes. They're like, we need to agree on one outfit. Yeah. Why did you dress as a pirate? Why? But they Why walk- have you got onions and a baguette and a bicycle? <laughs> because we're in France. They walk out of the Louvre with the painting. And yeah. of course, everyone goes, shit. And then the Louvre is closed. Huge investigation is launched. And the media surrounding the theft is the thing that makes Mona Lisa... As famous as it is today, mm. it deserved the fame. Obviously, there's no question about how valid it is. Mm. Not like everyone like, hey, let's reassess this masterpiece. <laughs> it just thrust it into yes. the public limelight because like the Mona Lisa been the stolen. Of marketing. Yeah. Insanely valuable. And people were questioned and blamed. <laughs> this is the thing I didn't know. The avant-garde writer, Guilla Apollinier, who was a writer, he was a poet, and he was a modernist. So he was questioned, did you steal the Mona Lisa? And he either implied, or because he knew him, Pablo Picasso was accused. Nice. Of stealing the Mona Lisa, going, you've hated the masters, hated haven't it. you? Oh, you modern men and your ways, haven't you? And they're like, no, we were yeah. nowhere near any of this. <laughs> the painting would be missing for two years. Mm. Two years until the culprit was discovered. And the culprit was Vincenzo Poreggia, who worked at the Louvre. No. Nah. He worked there. Who's going to suspect? Exactly. He'd worked there. He'd worked on the glass casing. The lady was protected by. And he believed that the Mona Lisa belonged in Italy. He was Italian. He felt it needed Mm. to be returned to Italy and sold, obviously, for a a decent price. Yes, a decent profit, yeah. He set up the theft. He knew exactly when to go in. He knew his Mm. accomplices to bring in. Went in overnight, takes out the painting. (laughs) Everyone clearly goes, "Eh, eh." no one was watching it. And he keeps the Mona Lisa in his apartment for two years. Nice. Has this work of art on the wall. But is slowly trying to get the word out in Italy to art dealers. Do you want to buy yep. the Mona Lisa? I will make sure it goes back to Italy. This was his thing. Is It, it was like, he needs, to, he needs to go back to Italy. Also, if he was that bothered, he could have just taken it to Italy and given it to a museum. He could have. But he wanted... Here, but he wanted the cash. He wanted expenses. He is trying to sell it for, for only half a million. Oh, I mean... That's still a lot of money it's in still, 1911. It's a lot of money lot. now. It's not, it's not Mona Lisa money, no, which but... is priceless. <laughs> but if he was doing it for the art and it should be going back to Italy because that's where it's from, then <laughs> don't put a price point. Tag you on can't that. put a price point on these things. No. So. Finds a buyer in Florence. He goes, okay, fine. Travels there with a trunk with a hidden bottom. Nice. That he's got the Mona Lisa in. Like so he it. goes on a train, Nick. Goes on a train. He does Yay! go on a train. Yay! No one suspects a thing. No one suspects absolutely. And a trunk with a hidden bottom. <laughs> like it. Like it. Yes. Yeah, sipping his screaming orgasms uh, yeah. all the way. Like my hidden bottom will oh, fox everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to the art dealer, but the art dealer has, of course, informed the police and said, Well, it would be a difficult one to, to advertise you've got, really, mm. isn't it? It's fine. Okay. I'm going to, yes, I'm a rich, crazy man in a castle, and I'm going <laughs> to. Wow! <laughs> I, so I'm, I'm going to have this pose, but I cannot tell anyone ever that I've got this picture. No. So there'll be a room that I can go and go, oh, look, I've got the Mona Lisa. Well, that's. But that's it. But no one can, you can't tell anyone. You can't go, come and come and see. Come and see the Mona Lisa. I've got the stolen Mona Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a topic we'll return to, and I'd like your opinion mm. on this. It's, it's, worth, it's worth a discussion, okay. maybe mid, midway through about you know the black market of where missing paintings have gone to has someone done that you know has someone with a castle going Absolutely. like yeah i've got a basement and i can trust a lot of people because i can buy and sell you no. the police are there the man is arrested the painting because it was in italy at the time it did go to the footsie for about two weeks huge numbers flocked mm. to see it and then the folklore around this sort of rises up that this man had tried to return the Mona Lisa Absolutely. to Italy to Italy to its rightful to home its it rightful had been stolen people. stolen by the French and it should stay here and he is lauded as a folk hero the truth is Da Vinci he worked with the French kings mm. regularly he designed their chateaus he gave them works of art so it's not Absolutely. it's not quite as bad as the British Museum it's, exactly That's, it's yeah. not like spoils of war type thing is it no and and stuff will come to but yeah the, the man who stole it he only got six months in prison well good for him the Mona Lisa has of course as you've referenced been attacked 
over the years yeah. mostly unsuccessfully because it's never been damaged it's only a tiny well no there's so much stuff in front of it yeah there was a man who threw a rock at the glass mm. before it was bulletproof you know you know the history of bulletproof glass in depth and deeply mm. someone threw a rock at it and a tiny shard knocked a pigment this is the level of detail that people well that's understand. probably I mean, bulletproof glass famously not rockproof <laughs> No, it wasn't bulletproof glass. It was just regular thick glass then. So bullets bouncing off. Rocks go straight through. Rocks thrown by a man. So That's fine. Yeah. We, can, we can stand like the velocity of a gun. Exactly. But a man with a rock. Yeah, can't, just can't do it. But yeah, again, over the years, the Mona Lisa was attacked. A man came in, atta- attacked it with a razor because he was in love with the Mona Lisa. Yeah, that's just weird. Just wanted to, to have her. And very recently, yeah, stop oil threw cake across the glass. <laughs> but people keep hurling shit at it. Yeah, they do. And as we, I think we've mentioned briefly before as well, occasionally that's very useful for art, more for sculptures. When the man attacked David mm. um, at the Galleria in Florence, the beautiful statue of David, which is incredible to look at. It's so amazing. But the tiny chip of the toe chipped off. And everyone's like, you bastard. This will really help us work out how old this is. Yes. This is amazing. We can do some tests now. We've been waiting for people to do this for years. <laughs> but there you go. That was a quick one about mm. the Mona Lisa. Like it. Mona Lisa. La, la, la. But now, now, mm. Nick, we're going to Ghent. Okay. Ghent, Belgium. For some altar pieces. We are going to the altar pieces. <laughs> What do you know? Well, I know there was it was this big triptych, isn't it? The op- uh, was... It's called a politic. Oh, but oh, sorry, beg your pardon. Beg it's your pardon. It's polyamorous. It loves it. Uh, it's the one that was sort of like hidden away from Nazis during the war and things. <laughs> yeah, lots of shit has happened yeah. to this. A I don't pe- know much about it, but I know the Ghent altar the thing God, is, is incredibly famous. Piece. So the Ghent um, altar piece, the most stolen artwork theoretically of all time. Yeah. And again, this is the thing that our dear dear listener Paul sent through to us. Also, the art historian Noah Charney has written loads of articles about that and gave such great resources, so shout out there. But yeah, most frequently stolen artwork in history. It's been burgled, it's been burned. It's been taken on six different occasions. It's the subject of 13 crimes over its <laughs> 600-year existence. Yeah. But could you describe the Ghent? Could, I couldn't know. Do you no. know what it looks like? I'm assuming there's one. I don't know. It's obviously religious. In but I don't even. I don't. Yes. Don't. I don't know what it depicts. If it's mm. is it stories? From, it must be like stories from the gospel or the life of Jesus or something. I don't. But I, <laughs> I don't know what it's all. <laughs> good. Um, good summary. But, uh, <laughs> Do a lecture on that. But some sort of church-based thing. <laughs> yeah, the altarpiece is yeah. based on some church shit. Yes, some churchy stuff. <laughs> so it is. It's massive. It's so huge. it's a series of panels. There's, mm. I think, there's about twelve different panels on it. It's absolutely huge. And it has been swiped by Napoleon, again, mm. disappeared twice in the world wars. It's either been hidden, it's been attacked, it was coveted by the Nazis. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Inspired movies and parts of it remain missing to mm. this day. Oh, I did not know that. Yes. So, <laughs> the Ghent altarpiece, also called the Adoration of the Mystic Lamb. Like it. <laughs> which I think is a good name for a band or an album for a folk rock band. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. So, what, Mystic, the Adoration of the Mystic Lamb. The Adoration yeah. of the Mystic or Lamb. Or just Mystic Lamb. <laughs> the Mystic Lamb is the Lamb of God. Out of context, honestly, if you weren't religious and you were like, what is the Lamb of God or the Mystic Lamb? And you see bits of it, which are incredibly detailed, like, why is everyone worshipping that lamb? Yes, why is there, why is there a lamb? Uh, the lamb represents the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> but, yeah, but, but, yeah, but why? <laughs> I know, I know it does. It's innocent, but this is like purity and it's tasty, rebirth, tasty, good fluff, with mint, good, good, <laughs> fluffy, 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 lovely, lovely chops, <laughs> lovely chops, as the spirit wanted. <laughs> On Easter, we eat lamb. We eat the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Okay, so the adoration of the Mystic Lamb. It was completed in 1432 by the Van Eyck brothers. 18 oak panels in total, showing different scenes for the bible as you've said so this is going to go behind the altar Mm. and it's going to show yeah all the key scenes from the bible it's going to show the people who commissioned it and some other you know key players absolutely the panels interesting enough covered in chalk and glue animal Mm -hmm. glue specifically and then you layer on the oil paint and then the paintings take shape so it's like an a to z of christianity Mm -hmm. you've got the annunciation you've got adam and eve we'll come to them john the baptist and you've got the adoration of the lamb of god and yet with the adoration of the lamb of god the scene of it 
look it up on the internet because it's incredibly detailed and you have sort of layers and layers of people mm. of like no the lamb's soldiers. got like a halo going on around his head it's kind of, i don't know if it's got a halo on it but oh. it's far away it's far away in the picture <laughs> very small far away <laughs> It's on a big old altar and it's sort of prancing. It's a fancy one sheep. One would. One would prance. Yeah, but the eyes follow you. The mm. eyes look out and they're really far away. But someone examining going, the eyes follow you around the room. <laughs> but it is now, it continues to be on display at St. Uh, Bavo's Cathedral in Ghent in Belgium. So the brothers who painted it, Hubert and Jan, were from the Netherlands. It was commissioned by the mayor of Ghent and his wife for the cathedral. Hubert died six years before the panel was completed and his brother Jan completed it for its installation in 1432. And it's one of the most important early oil paintings mm -hmm. and the transition between Middle Ages into the Renaissance. It has an inscription on one of the panels because people always go back and forth like which brother did what and it's quite sweet or could be very passive aggressive. Yeah. Huber van Eyck, and in Latin it's it's written greater than anyone. Modest. Then Jan, calling himself second best in the art, completed it in 1432. So this is inscription naming Huber as the greater than anyone and Jan second best. So Jan wrote that. Said like he was the genius and mm -hmm. I am only second best. Or I like to think that Huber wrote that on there just before he died <laughs> and go, you finish this knowing you'll always be second. <laughs> <laughs> seems, seems harsh. Probably didn't happen, but, yeah. you know, we can dream. Now, the original framing was lost. You'll be very sad about this, Nick, because that had all sorts of moving pieces. And I like a moving piece. Yeah, and music. Nice. It played music and I mean, it opened shutters and stuff like that. I mean, the, the things from back then, so desperately clever. So much. So all that mechanical movement and mm. things like that is incredible how they came up with all that sort of shenanigans back then. It's amazing. Into the reformation mm. into that like they go no oh, we don't need any of that fancy shit had trouble over the years so it was the target of calvinists in mm. the 1560s they broke into the cathedral going we're gonna burn it we're gonna burn it it's all very icony mm. none of that they went where's it gone and they went oh well we don't know we just went away <laughs> someone else came here earlier and got it it had been hidden up the bell tower <laughs> And it stayed up there for a number of years. And I do like to Good picture to someone it. who is holding the rope going, please make them leave. This is very heavy. So, so it was suspended from a rope. I'm not okay. kidding. But I don't think by man holding. No, I don't think that. <laughs> but I like to picture it. It's just one altar boy like, please help me. It's just for the, for the next four years, there's a continuous stream of rotor of people holding this rope. Yeah. Like, can I go on lunch now? <laughs> now i got news for you. There's a... There's a hook just there. <laughs> no, no. Suffer for your answer. Exactly. You must suffer for the Lamb of God. The Lamb. The Lamb watches. <laughs> Side note: It was burned at different points, but it was mm. restored. There were some restorations that were really clumsy. And there was a really nice side note about in 1550, there was a restoration that took place, and the artist performed it with such care and reverence that, according to accounts with such love that they kissed that skillful work in art in many places. Okay. Don't kiss the art. Don't kiss the art. I think oh, that's I one you. of the things. It's just leave the art alone. <laughs> or just they're, they're fixing going, oh, I'm so sorry. Mm, boo -boo, boo -boo kiss. <laughs> oh, you remember art restoration. Do you remember that that woman in Italy? If you, if you... <laughs> right, uh, that's a good sentence. No, they were, they were, in modern times, I think it oh, was right. probably about 10 years or so, there was a, uh, a fresco in a church in Italy somewhere. Of mm. of the, the the Jesus, the Jesus, yeah. Um, Nobody fuck with the Jesus. Um, but it was it was quite sort of worse for wear, and it needed work done. But the church mm. couldn't afford to do yep. the work, so a, a parishioner thought, "I'm good at art." Oh no! Please don't. I'm tell good me at art. Gonna sort of. I'll 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 do it. No, I'm, I'm just trying just trying just trying to find a picture of it. I'm going to show show you a picture of the what it was. This this was the b before. Oh, that so, is a very Jesus -y picture. A very Jesusy thing. A sort yeah, of sorry, um, of like in the torment. Does it say when it was when it was originally painted? End of the nineteenth century, so not ancient. Hmm. But that but then she's like, no, it needs it needs work. It needs work. This is what it ended up like. Jesus Christ! <laughs> why? Oh, why are you showing me that, Nick? What? Um, what in the what has yes. happened? So b before and after. Oh my God! Uh, so we'll put this in the the episode notes or what Please have you. Do. Yeah. Um, oh. But yeah, I remember. <gasps> and it is like m monkey Jesus. It's just. <laughs> it's like a child has drawn over it. Yeah. 
Who would, who would, who would, and why, and why? And yeah, she was. <laughs> I'm just reading this article. It's 2012. Yeah. Um, an 80 year old amateur painter decided to fix it up. How would the church give it to her, though? Well, no, because it was, it was on the wall. It's 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 a uh, it's on oh, on the wall of the church, and she just did it off her own back. her own back. She waited yeah. in a closet overnight yeah. because with the, her church, the church is the church is open, though, so it's, uh, it's just a fresco on the wall. So she decided one day to I'm going to go. I'm going to go sort this out. You got me on a, on a tangent of failed no, restorations. Brilliant. Please do. Please keep them coming during this. We've got, we've got the history to go through. Back to the altarpiece. So it's been restored and into the into 1782. This is great. So Emperor Joseph II visited the cathedral to see this beautiful altar work. And he pretty much screamed at the sight of Adam and Eve. Because they're naked! My God. Nude! Nude with the fig leaves, but... It's incredibly evocative. The picture of them, the very, <laughs> it begs for some voiceover work. Like there's there's people on TikTok who do it and just kind of like do a little script and like do a voiceover for them because they just look so dour and miserable. <laughs> and Eve is holding a, a citrus fruit. Not nice. an apple, a small citrus a, a fruit. Small fruit. And it's been like, hey, do you want to have a little citrus fruit? Okay, no, I don't really want to do that. Really do that. But yeah, the emperor came in and go, remove it, remove it. We can't have them naked. And the priest are going, you know, Adam and Eve were definitely naked. They, we, they, we, yes, it's they discussed have. many times yeah. in the Bible. No, they all wore gowns and ruffles. <laughs> we won't have this. Mm-mm. Oh, so that reminds me of another thing. Oh, you got me on going. Got you've, you got me on, you've got me on Who the remindings. Who you would, would set you off? In the Vatican, they have uh, obviously a huge amount of old sort of Greek and Roman sort of statues and sculptures and things like that. Now, right. famously, a lot of Greek and Roman um, statues were done nude. That obviously, nice. eventually, when in this sort of period, people go, naked people, <laughs> none of that. And I'm sorry, not, not at all in the Vatican. No, 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 no. Because it, like, people, the temptation. Exactly, you can't have like statues with willies going around because <laughs> people will go, ooh, 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 ooh. Well, really not in the Catholic it's, Church. It's no, not, it's not ideal can't. at all. So the, a Pope, I can't remember which Pope it was, drew all the willies to be removed. No. And then a load of plaster cast fig leaves. Love it. Chucked on all these statues. Shame. Um, so yeah, so hack off, hack off the genitalia. Yeah. Chuck on a load of precast plaster fig leaves yeah. on all these statues oh, to, to, yes, to stop inciting inciting lust <laughs> in, the, in the Vatican. Well, I mean, it's the Vatican. There's a lot of your own bishops and priests going around. <laughs> Have words with them mm. before you start. Okay. The art is the thing that's making them attack <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. It's the art that was a thing. <laughs> they Inspiring. keep getting reports of the abuse through. And yeah. They go, you know what the problem is? The statues. The no, statues. I don't want to hear any counter arguments. <laughs> whatsoever so, yeah. I think that was like yeah 16, 1700s or something like that so, at that sort of point where they're going oh no 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 no, 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 no. Naked well people. I suppose you couldn't you have no porn you know so, so, <laughs> you sorry. just go to the oh, Vatican statues. for a bit. just look at it like oh my god <laughs> pubic hair is a thing oh my god so curly no yeah <laughs> the attention to detail on some of those oh it's incredible classic I mean incredible the marble artwork of people with veils and stuff like that but it's the attention to detail to the pubes yeah they're so curly they're so curly and fluffy <laughs> Really they are. So. I know, and praise to them. <laughs> Artist was really going to work. 1794. Yes. <laughs> French Revolution, Nick. Anyway, I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, carry on. 1794, French Revolution. It's like I'm tying everything together. It's, it? it's, it's, it's all, it's all There's always a common thread. <laughs> Our dear friend Napoleon ordered his troops to steal four pieces of the panels and bring them to Paris. Mm-hmm, and okay. they will sit in the Louvre. Everything should be in the Louvre. Everyone Everything Belgian is French now. That's it. After Waterloo and Boning, like, oh, yep, yep, shove him away. Off you go. The panels were returned. Very kind. By the king to Belgium, who's very happy with Belgium. You helped me while I was exiled, so I'm now king, so you can have your panels back. Should be the end of it. Now, now a priest who worked in the cathedral swiped the wings of the altarpiece, so not actual works of art, but, mm-hmm. you know, decoration. And in 1816, pawned them. Nice. Not sure what for. More wine. I am hoping a sandwich. A sandwich. A good, a good sandwich. <laughs> a a good selection sandwich. of altar boys. Crisps. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> With the sawn off genitalia <laughs> from the Vatican. Right happened to the penises. I just want those and you can have all this yes. other time. I bought them a box of penises from the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't marble. <laughs> You sick, sick freaks. <laughs> Your wall is very interesting. <laughs> you didn't very, think about putting the artwork up? No. No, no. Just a wall of seven penises. <laughs> also, would you like some wine? <laughs> some wine. No, I'm fine. Can, can I take your coat? <laughs> 
oh, that's quite handy. They're hanging. <laughs> also, I'm so frightened. <laughs> <laughs> but this pawning of the wings, yeah. the rest of the artwork was taken in World War One. but it was taken to Germany. So the rest of the artwork could be reunited with the wings, you see. Right. Perfectly reasonable. Oh, so the wings were in Germany at this point? Yes. They, they'd, right, okay. they'd ended up, they'd they'd ended up in... They ended up in Germany. And in World War One. The Germans then went, mm. well, we need the rest of the artwork to match with the wings. Yeah, we got the wings. Might as well get the rest yeah, of we it. have to restore it. I mean... That's just normal. Have to like, restore it here. But it's <laughs> ours. No, 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 no. Okay, Treaty of Versailles. Return that. It's mm. fine. It should all be fine now. It should all be fine. Let the bloody altar mm. lie. No, no. World War Two. World yeah. War Two. Hitler decides he wants a piece of this. He likes a bit of art. He really did. He had a plan to make the the greatest well, the museum. Greatest of museum. All time. Absolutely. The, well, the Führer Museum or whatever. The it was. Führer it was, Museum. It was yeah. It's going to be the grandest, massivest museum. Exactly. In the history of the world. And that's why you have so many works of art stockpiled and hidden away Goebbels also wanted yeah. the altar work and, and there's there's differing reports between he was working for Hitler to go and find artworks there was also Goebbels was definitely trying to get stuff for himself oh god absolutely and, like, I think, I'm sure his, his apartment was probably fairly well kitted out oh yeah yeah, yeah. anything that's <laughs> missing was in Goebbels apartment yeah so it's taken along with I think it's 7,000 other pieces of artwork that had been pillaged by the Nazis stored in various castles this one was stored in the salt mine in Austria where lots of other works of yeah. art were found but that one was saved by the Monuments Men yes yes indeed 1945 and inspired the film mm. there is a film out yes. there is so they found the paintings returned them to get I can't go into the whole of the Monuments Men but yay no, good for them good for them good for them uh, no, but it, oh, so you, another thing that they were there was there was sold in during the war, which I think is fascinating, is the the amber room. Okay, don't know. So okay, so some in St. Petersburg in Russia, in the Winter Palace, right? There was a a room, a ballroom that was entirely just covered in amber, Ooh, and it's okay. just known as the amber room. Absolutely exquisitely yeah. decked out in these amber panels, and when the the Nazis were running in there, going, oh, we're going to get all the shiny things. All these panels were, were taken off the wall and strips. The palace was stripped Ooh. bare of all these these panels, and then they have never been seen since. They yeah. they're assumed to be yet yeah, they're in a mine somewhere in a cave. They've been stashed Maybe away just been stashed somewhere. Away or um, been sold privately. Well, potentially, but I think something like that would have come out because this is one of the ultimately famous missing things. Yeah, yeah. I think the theory is that it's just in a cave somewhere. In not a, been found. Well, you still have treasure found. hunters who were oh, going absolutely. around trying to find it. And there was a, there was, oh, I don't go, see, I'm going off on things. Again. <laughs> there was a story about some people in Poland mm-hmm. who were treasure hunters, and they had discovered what they think is a buried train. Oh my god! In Poland, and it was on sort of on a on a route that they thought, okay, yeah, a lot of a lot of artwork and valuables and gold and whatever had was being ferried out of Eastern Europe, yeah. sort of into into Germany, and at the end of the war. Apparently, sort of Germans hid a lot of these transports and things because yeah. they thought if no point getting it back to Berlin because the Allies are there now, so they were all <laughs> hidden away. And there was a story that they, yeah, these these sort of treasure hunters had thought they discovered a buried train wow. and number of cars and things, but then they were stopped from investigating by the Polish government. <gasps> said no, you can't go there because you, you haven't got the right permits, or it was some, there was some Ooh. reason why they couldn't like dig it out and have a look so it's still sort of like buried there going it yeah. could be full of treasures it's, it's a common um, theme or, with art yeah. that is missing weirdly you hit a wall yeah absolutely with a lot of people going no oh, we can't possibly but we look can't over possibly look there. There. we can't possibly figure uh-huh. it out but yes it's like oh but what could be down there what could be down what it's could be exciting. down there but the old piece, so the old work, has 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 survived mm. at this point. But it was in 1934, so we're going entirely a bit back, before the Nazi slap fight of them going, we should have everything. <laughs> the Nazi slap fight? Yes. No, not the war. Right, I'm saying okay. over that's, the art. That's a slightly trivial no, way I was going to say the Nazi slap fight over the art. No. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> people died. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> for the war. <laughs> the only successful theft that has still not been solved <laughs> of this altarpiece. So a group of thieves <laughs> hid in the cathedral overnight in April of 1934, waited for the doors to be locked. They waited till the coast was clear. They carefully removed the panels containing the just judges and also John the Baptist, a panel containing John the Baptist. Very carefully, 
so as not to damage the rest of the artwork. It wasn't clumsy. It wasn't frivolous. A note was left in its place, written in French, taken from Germany by the Treaty of Versailles. Next day, people come to the cathedral to see the old piece and go, there's a bit missing. And they say, something is, something is wrong. Something's wrong. So the authorities are called. The commissioner of the Ghent police arrives on the scene to investigate and goes, okay, piece of art has been stolen. Right. Well, we will put our best men on this in a bit, though, because there's a much more pressing crime I have to investigate just down the street. <laughs> a cheese shop has been burgled. I mean, that is a more pressing crime, I feel. He left the scene just to go and investigate the cheese shop. How much cheese was missing? I don't know. There is very little detail apart from it is written down that he left to go and investigate a cheese shop burglary while he was going, oh my God, it's awful. <laughs> How will we cope with this art going cheese? Is this is this Gouda? Oh, it's yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, can if I have a Beaujolais like, to help with this? Where he got his cheese from. <laughs> and that was his Christmas cheese. <laughs> <laughs> in in April. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was Easter cheese. <laughs> yeah, depending when Easter fell that year. Like, he was just finding excuses on the spot to be where the cheese was. Eventually, the Bishop of Ghent received a ransom note. One million francs, Belgian francs, for the return of the just judges. This correspondence starts, and as a gesture of goodwill to say, I'm, I'm serious... Whoever writes a letter returns the panel with John the Baptist in it. So whoever's writing these letters has the art. Oh. Back and forth they go. The bishop and the government get involved and they go, no, we're not paying one million francs. No. We're not doing it. We can't pay it. This continues through the summer into the autumn. Whoever's writing it evades capture. They cannot track them down. The panel appears to be lost forever. In November, Arsène Godetier, again, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, <laughs> He's lying, dying in his bed, having had a heart attack during a political rally. Mm. Calls his lawyer and says, I know where the mystic lamb is. The lawyer goes, that's right, go into the light. He's like, oh, you <laughs> bastard. I know where the bloody stolen artwork is. Go, and he instructs him to go to his desk in his office. And he says, in a desk drawer, you will find an envelope. And the lawyer follows his instructions. And he goes in, he opens this envelope and he finds copies of the ransom notes, he says. And a final unsent note. The artwork rests in a place neither I nor nobody else can take it away without rousing the attention of the public. Oh. So it doesn't tell him where the artwork is. No. But leaves this clue. But it's in a public place. Mm. It's concluded that Arsene had been the thief. Oh. He had been the thief. He was hinting at the panel was hidden in plain sight in Ghent. So that's what they thought. But like, if you if you move it, it will arouse the attention of the public. Is it hidden in the cathedral? Is it somewhere we can all yeah. see it? Or is it in the possession of someone really high profile? Many think there was a cover up going on that the church was in on the removal of these panels and sort of dress up as a heist but try and sell it to recoup losses that the cathedral had suffered. Was Arsene trying to sell the paintings? Yeah, yeah, he stole it and just trying to make mm. money for himself. He was not a poor man. Mm. He had a lot of money. That panel has never been found mm. and it is still investigated to this day. There was an officer, there's still an officer assigned to the case mm -hmm. and there was one, a guy called Karel uh, Mortier who was through the 80s and 90s found out all sorts of things asked for access to the archives from the cathedral about the painting they gave him the archives but the crucial years between 1934 and 1945 were removed yeah. they were missing they also he also found out that the typewriter by Arsène who apparently wrote the ransom notes other officers had used it so they couldn't check it for fingerprints. Uh. So there were little bits missing. The cathedral has been searched many, many times and an x-ray has been done of all of the cathedral to 10 metres deep, no sign. Okay. No sign of anything. Not hidden in a wall or a secret room or anything. Though. You would hope, you would hope. Nice fact, 1995, Arsène's skull was illegally excavated by an amateur detective and then someone used it in a seance to try and ask him where the theft, um, where the did, panel was. How did that go? Not well, not, not well. well. They no. haven't found it. They haven't found yeah. it. There's also been, this is from the Catholic Leader website, which is actually a really good resource on this. Great speculation about why the Nazis had a fascination with it. And there are all sorts of claims that the altarpiece contained a map to lost Catholic treasures. Oh. So if you looked at the panel, yeah, then yeah, you'd yeah. find the crown of thorns, the holy grail and the spear. 
Yeah, no. Uh, no, 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 you don't believe that? Uh, there, there was a map hidden in that particular panel? No, I don't believe that. Yeah, yeah. But before we come to the final and most terrifying story, yes. I think it's time for a drink. I think it is. Okay, Nick, mm. we have our drinks. We do. We have delved into the past. Yes. We have told some fun stories of art heists. Yes. You've told some interesting facts. Yes. Yes, they've been very good. But apparently I'm over it. But now we must end with that, the most terrifying, terrifying theft of all. <laughs> it, it is the scream. Is it scream related? It is the scream. You were right. I tried to fox you the whole no. time. Oh, I tried. I was thinking, do Usually, I use the scream done. on the Instagram picture uh, as a secret ingredient? But I was like, no, no, no let's like t- tease like people out, tease yeah, people out. I like it. And these are modern. Modern. Yes, indeed. We don't very, very recent. Well, pretty recently, yeah. yeah. The, the main one, well, <laughs> oh, bless your heart, Nick, because one of them is like 30 years ago. Oh, wasn't there one of the 2000s or something? There so? was. Okay, there yeah. was... So that's, that's, I think that's modern. Yeah, that's modern. <laughs> but one is in the 90s. Yes. And we have to kind of go, oh, that was yesterday. It's like, no. a while ago. Mm, yeah. But still, modern for us, but... If you're talking about art heists, I think The Scream is a great story mm. and The Scream is a great painting because so many it of is. us know it. There's a particular reason why so many of us know The Scream, not just because it's lovely. It's a good picture. Um, because it came out of copyright in the 90s. So it was reproduced. So many posters. Oh my God, so many <laughs> posters. Everyone had the posters of The Scream and The Scream's making a spliff. So many trips to Athena. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a shopping canter in the 90s. I keep saying that to Ben. Every time he picks up a kitten with his shirt off, and I go, oh, you're trying to do an, a, you're trying to do an Athena, yeah, poster. Athena poster. And he's too young to know what yeah. Athena was. Yeah, but the oh. Athena posters, but you got the scream. And so it was mass produced and again, inspired Ghostface. Absolutely. And inspired lots of other things as well. Do you think end. it's someone screaming or someone hearing a scream? Well, this is what I was going to ask you. So let me let me explain okay. the scream to people who, who don't know. <laughs> people Anyone without eyes. <laughs> Have you not eyes, people? So the scream, Skirk in Norwegian. Also known, that its name that it was given at its first exhibition in German was a scream of nature. Mm. So people lean heavily into that. One of the most iconic images, you've got the swirling sky and the river and the ghostly figure appearing to be screaming for some reason by Edvard Munch. Uh, that's that's how I've always said it. I could be entirely wrong. I think it's Munch. I've some people say Munch. Some yeah. say Munch, Munch, but it's about Munch. So he had a rough childhood. Yes. People write about a lot. He was ill a lot of the time. His mother died. His sister died. His father was a great creative support, but also incredibly religious. Mm -hmm. So death stalked him at every turn. And the judgment that would await after death as well. And one of his sisters was diagnosed with mental illness, was put in an asylum, tragically. The inspiration behind the painting said that he took inspiration after walking by the fjord one evening in January 1892. He was with two friends, and he said that he saw the clouds turn blood red as the sun set. And he described it as blood and tongues above the black-blue fjord. And he said in his own journal, he wrote, I sensed a scream passing through nature. It seemed to me that I had heard... The scream. It's very powerful. Mm. Others have surmised that this vision may have been complemented by the fact that both a slaughterhouse and a lunatic asylum were right next to where he was standing. There's a lot of screaming going on. And indeed, his sister was in an asylum at the time. So the inner turmoil, the pain, and everything that's associated with it. I, again, like to think that there was just screaming all around him. Just animals being slaughtered and and someone screaming the asylum his friends fell down and slipped and went help me help me and he's just going yes I think I should call it the scream for God's sake my leg the dear old screaming <laughs> of the lambs <laughs> lambs they were screaming others they also think it was based on a Peruvian mummy when you start to delve into some of the um, I mean some of the theories are mad well there, there's a picture of a Peruvian mummy that was an inspiration for Paul Galgan. Yeah, and he used a mummy. A mummy stood for him as a model. He just got a mummy and made it stand for. It. Like, yeah. Had it there, like, huh? but the mummy is the same sort of pose. It's fetal. It's like a fetal position. It was first exhibited in 1893. Now there are four versions of the screen, not just one. Mm-hmm. Very important to note. There's two paintings, two pastels. So people kind of go like, "Well, what does that matter?" It just matters in terms of which ones we're talking about. He created in 1893 they needed pastel versions and then one of the paintings was 1910 all by him Hmm? there's just different versions yes it's going to develop over time you'd have a beginning sort of a a sketch of an idea and you would develop your 
piece, I suppose. Yeah, the 1893 version exists. The 1910 one, he just revisited and you sort of looked at his early one and he did another version mm. of it. And so they're all, you know, masterpieces. He wrote on one of the paintings, the very faint inscription could only have been painted by a madman. And it's thought that he wrote that after receiving criticism for the work mm. in 1895. So as I said, exhibited, first exhibited in 1893. You've got the that version in the National Gallery of Oslo, second painted version from 1910, and then you have the two pastel versions. One of the pastel versions is in the Munch Museum. The other was owned by Hugo Simon, who was a really famous Jewish German art collector, completely chased mm. out of Germany by the Nazis. This passed on to different people was sold in 2012 for how much? Oh, God, hundreds of millions. $119.9 million yeah. dollars to <sighs> Leon Black. Mm. Highest ever sum paid at auction at the time. Yeah. Factoid, the most expensive painting of all time in terms of being bought is Da Vinci's Salvatore Mundo, which was bought in 2017. How much? Is that 200 and something? Up. 300 and something. Up. 600. Down. That's stupid <laughs> money. 450.3 million That's dollars. Insane. Who has that money? People wow. have that money, but who has that money? And also, yeah, no, if I was a billionaire, I'd just do that. <laughs> I want a Da Vinci. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I would. I just, well, we're poor. So in so, comparison to that, we're poor. I'm going to go, I'm going to buy a KitchenAid. <laughs> that you yeah. don't use on the side. That's the sign. Absolutely. Or a Da Vinci. Or a Da Vinci. Or a Da Vinci. A Da Vinci in the bathroom. Neck propped up <laughs> against the KitchenAid. So, yeah. I was going to say to you, what do you think the screen represents now that it, you know, it, it's obviously versions of it have been sold. It is in the museums. It is possibly... And many of the art historians have credited as being as iconic as the Mona Lisa. Oh, for sure. Yeah. What do you think it represents? Do you think it's screaming or hearing? No, a scream? I think it's. I think it is someone hearing a scream. Really? Yeah. Okay. Discuss. Yeah. No, I. I, just, I think. It, well, I think it's someone. I don't think it's someone's. In. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how to. I don't know how to. Put it into words. Paint it, Nick. Paint it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think it is someone hearing. I think it is someone. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Is someone who yeah is is hearing something utterly dreadful or thinking of something utterly dreadful or imagining something utterly dreadful, mm. or, and then yes, just horrified. Mm. I think they are screaming. Mm. I think it's it's an anxiety or it's something the scream of nature the fact that it's called scream of nature i didn't mm. know until very recently it was like oh that's interesting there's two figures in the background though mm -hmm. and i always like the idea of what do they know well, i know that's representative of edvard when he was mm. standing there and he heard this and his two friends are walking down the path like this figure is left standing screaming also it's a little bit like gossip of like Oh my God, what did I hear? <laughs> and apparently, I shit you not, Home Alone poster. Macaulay oh, absolutely. Culkin Macaulay is Culkin. On, is based on yeah, the screen. no, abs yes. Yeah. It's based on the screen, which kind of ruins it, really. Yeah. But oh, I like it that you hear a scream. No, I think I think it is someone hearing something dreadful. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily something dreadful, but something that they really don't want to hear. Well, whatever it is, it denotes fear, anxiety, yeah. trouble. Absolutely. Yeah, either madness. Way. <laughs> either way. <laughs> either way, it's all those things. And it could drive a man mad yeah. trying to own it, Nick. <laughs> The first attempt of the theft of the scrim was in 1994, a deliciously audacious attempt. Now, the National Gallery in Oslo was having a bit of a reshuffle because Oslo was hosting the 94 Winter Olympics and wanted to create a showcase of Norwegian culture. And so they decided they're going to move the scrim down to this exhibition to the ground floor. Mm -hmm. Famously, don't put your most expensive works of art on the ground floor. I say famously, mm. I read that today. <laughs> mm. Because easy near, near to break front, in. Near the front door. <laughs> near the front door <laughs> by, by this propped up window <laughs> and bag of swag. But no, don't do not do that. But they had. They had moved it downstairs from its second floor position. So everyone's like, it should be like, no, it's fine. There's guards and alarms and cameras and we'll make sure it's extra safe by putting a small bit of wire I mean, across it. it. Yeah, yeah, bit no of wire. Keep a lot of people that. away. That's a bugger to move. Opening day of the Olympics rolls around on the 12th of February, 1994. Everyone's fixated. Alarms indeed are ringing. 
in the museum and the scream has vanished. Does someone ski through? <laughs> <laughs> energy love it yes, into like, a wall into those like the a, a toboggan has went past really fast <laughs> and they nicked a picture off the wall <laughs> they've smashed through walls and also got some art love it reviewing the security footage they see two men place a ladder up to a window climb up it fall off nice climb up it again smash through the window barrel through tackle that pesky wire by just cutting it <laughs> see but now it looks like some sort of Laurel Hardy sketch it's quite fun so people are watching going oh what jolly japes what jolly japes <laughs> they get the painting out of there in under a minute yeah under a minute 50 seconds That's they're in get the painting out work. they have time to leave a note Nick nice I, I imagine they may have pre-written the note I don't think they, they were just licking <laughs> do you have pen. a pen <laughs> <laughs> I thought of something witty I know this would be really funny don't worry it's for a thing they left a note that reads, thanks for the poor security. Well, oh, that's, that's going to sting. It's going to sting. Everyone in the museum like, what the fuck are we doing? So obviously a huge hunt is launched. Mm. Huge hunt to find the painting. It's embarrassing for the museum. The museum director, a guy, Nutz Berg, spoke to the press. His primary concern is the damage of the painting. Oh. The most famous painting, he said, it is impossible to sell. So he's probably thinking, please don't mess it up. Yeah. But also you cannot sell this. What are you going to so do with it? Yeah. What are you going to do? No, of course you can't. Of course you can't sell it. And we go back to the man in the castle kind of thing. Now, this doesn't happen in this case, but, you know, the man in the castle with his vulva, yeah. where probably he's keeping some brides as well and dead bodies, which are not going to show to people. Mm-hmm. Come back to that thought. Mm-hmm. But, no, it's not in the story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah, someone has got it. How are they going to sell it on the black mm. market? Would you like the screen? We know what that is. We've seen the Athena posters. Um, it would do great on eBay. Oh, it would do great on eBay. It would do great on eBay. Yeah, a British boot fair. Yeah. Those people are feral. They'll well, take anything true, and they'll pay but, high but prices. The, no, they won't. They'll, they'll bargain you down to 50p. Oh, no, but if it's in demand. <laughs> all you have to do is linger by a table and go, oh, I quite fancy that. No, no, no I'll pay more than she's paying. <laughs> So during the heist, they are reaching out to everyone. A contact is made, a lead. They get a lead. It is from an anti-abortion group. Okay. So we have the painting. It will be returned if you play an anti-abortion film on Norwegian TV first. And they go, okay. And that's bold. It's bold. They say, can we have some proof that you have the painting? Yeah. And they go, uh... <laughs> yeah, we've, we've definitely got it. Can you definitely hear it? got it. Yeah, it's that, that's it in the background. Right, you don't have the painting at all, do you? <laughs> Just send a picture of a poster. <laughs> <laughs> they send the do, wrong one. Do the classic Mr. Bean thing. What does he do? He sort of <laughs> egg washes it or something, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, they could have. They didn't think that through. This... <laughs> they were clearly, that's not the scream. And they were like, no, it's making a noise. Like they didn't scream like they had to shut up. Mm. There's a famous story as well. I think it's a joke, but it is based on a true story with this couple who go to see the Laughing Cavalier the painting and they yes. go, I think the sound's turned down. Oh, that's upsetting. Yeah. And they still think, I think they must have the sound turned down. I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's just angered you. Oh, no, it's just it? annoying that there are people that are stupid in the world. <laughs> so that claim is false, but the gallery did receive an apparently genuine ransom demand. One million dollars equivalent. For the return of the painting. And the gallery go, no. Mm-hmm. No, 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 we're good, thanks. We don't need to pay that because they are brought in Scotland Yard, Nick. Ooh, Scotland, Yard. Scotland Yard. And they're going to set up a sting. Nice. A sting. Detective Charles Hill poses as an American art dealer. He gets the help of the Getty Museum. He gets word out on the underground he's interested in buying. So back and forth, back and mm. forth, are kind of like, you know, the right people get in touch. He has a handler who was a gangster who works in different places Brilliant. in Amsterdam and across the places. And he makes an offer. Of a quarter of a million dollars. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a quarter of a million dollars. Whoever it is who has the painting is like, fine, fine, fine whatever. Yeah. I can't get yeah. it for a million, quarter of a million. That'll set me up. No problem, no problem. And they go, okay, fine. We will meet you at midnight in the coldest, darkest corner of the city. And Charles Hill goes, no, no, you know what? No, no, that's that seems a bit weird, honestly. Mm. Can I meet you in broad daylight? And they go... Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, fine, 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 fine. fine. Yes, let's go to a lovely summer house. Yes, yes. <laughs> they go to a let's, summer let's house. Do coffee. <laughs> <laughs> let's do coffee. No, they go to a summer house, a lovely cottage in the same area that uh, Edvard Mug painted. Okay, nice. Uh, like nice, it. nice touch, nice touch. He goes, he meets them on the 7th of May. 
they bring up the painting from the basement and Hill is a trained, not only a detective, he's, he's, he's memorized no, expert the in art. art. Yes, absolutely. So he can identify that it's mm. genuine. And he identifies it by the, this is really nice detail, the wax splatters nice. on the painting of where Munk would have blown out the candle. That's very smart. Isn't that good? I like that. Because he knew that there would be wax splatters yeah. at this particular bit. And he says, I can see that. They're really fine detail. Yeah, okay. Like it. So from that, I'm not sure if it's at the cottage or whether he goes back to the hotel and he takes the painting with him. But of course, they're arrest made. Yes. The sting happens. The men are arrested for attempted theft, attempting to sell stolen goods. The director of the National Gallery says the painting was undamaged, save for a microscopic pin print. And that just shows the level of detail you have to look at. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're yeah. with their microscopes. Yeah, but they said they handled it with extreme care. It's wonderful to see the painting again. The lead culprit was a man named Paul Enger, who was a former footballer, branched into Art Heist because he'd previously served time for trying to steal another of that artist's work. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And it was the vampire that he tried to steal. I don't know that picture. Yeah, that's quite a nice one. Oh, I'll have to have a look. It's I don't know good. that one. All the men were sentenced to six years. Three out of four of them walked free. Oh, wow. Because the British officers who came over to do the sting operation came over under false names, and that's illegal. Uh... Under Norwegian law. So they had broken the law, so the case fell apart. So they couldn't... They, mm, da, da, da. Oh, the wonder of the fine print. Yeah, but they got the painting back. Well, they got, that's the thing, is it? They got the painting back, absolutely. They did, but then it was stolen again. Yeah. You would have thought after that one, more wires would be involved. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. So. Right now. Well, no, this one was in the Monk, Monk Museum. So not in the gallery. This mm-hmm. is in uh, 2004. So this was the 1910 painting. Mm. So the redone one, the Munch Museum, 22nd of August. This time, much more bold. Masked gunmen just yeah. walk in. Ah! Now, I do remember this one being in the news. Yes. This one, absolutely. Yeah, it would be just like people just going in with fucking shotguns. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> going in just... with, with magnums and yeah. they go in and everyone's like, okay, just take it. With just ice creams? It. <laughs> I'll get you. I'll get you. It's a white one. No, no. <laughs> it's got nuts. I'm allergic. Ah. <laughs> they take the scream and they also take Monk's Madonna from the walls. Security here, cl- pretty relaxed too. All that is goes, you know what to secure them? We'll just put an extra bit of wire, a cord to attach it to the wall. Someone who was there at the time said, all you need to do is just yank it and it yeah. came free. And famously, there is a photo of the criminals running away to their getaway card. Where someone is outside with their phone in 2004 just goes, what the fuck? And just takes <laughs> this the <looks> picture. Fun. <laughs> and there's just guys in balaclavas carrying yeah. these works of art to a battered old Volvo. It's an estate car, at least. It's not a hatchback. <laughs> just shove the fuckers in there. Um, so, yeah, they, they run off. An investigation, lengthy investigation was launched. and But hopes of getting the painting back dwindled. But mm. they thought the screen has been taken. Yeah, it's gone. Because traces of the, the frame that it was held in were found with an abandoned car and they thought they yes. burned it. There was all sorts of rumours they burned it. Because mm. they know they can't sell it and they just don't want to get chased. So then they've just set fire to it. Which is, you know, horrifying and, and traumatising for anyone involved. By June the next year... Four suspects were in custody, no painting. A two million kroner reward had been offered for the return of the paintings. To sweeten the deal, literally, Mars, the sweet company, not the planet, can't stress that enough. Yeah, yeah, okay. Offered two million M&Ms in exchange for information <laughs> about the painting's return. Like it. Why? I, did not, I, didn't Why? Remember, I didn't remember that bit, but they brilliant. D- they did. I think the planet should have offered something too, but yeah. No one took up the offer. Though some people said, ah, but then information was shared later. Mm. Maybe that was the thing that actually turned people. Three men were convicted of planning or committing the robbery. There was no public information about the painting's whereabouts. Two of the men who were convicted were ordered to pay 750 million kroner in compensation, the value of the painting. So it's a a gesture. Yeah, gesture. Because they don't have that on them. But then in August 2006, the police announced they'd found the paintings. Mm. But they gave no other information. It, it's rocked up. Didn't say where they got it from. Yeah. Didn't say how they'd found it out. Much less damage than they thought. Tiny bit of water damage on the screen. Little bottom corner. Uh, the Madonna, she'd been slashed a bit and like poked holes in her arms and stuff like that. But <sighs> all could be fixed and restored. 
so they showed the damaged paintings for a bit and then they took them and they restored them and now they're under about seven foot of glass. <laughs> they're flat. You don't see them on the walls. Yeah. You see them under boxes, under boxes, and a box, and a box, and a box. <laughs> Behind and people, people with just shotguns. With guns. <laughs> ish. Yeah. Ish. And they go, well, what happens, happens. But yeah, they've been back on display. So people also believe that the scream is cursed. Do they indeed? People feel that when they see it, they have very visceral reactions, that arguments start. Well, it's an emotional piece. It is. People genuinely have emotional reactions. Mm. And there is a story of an employee who was moving the painting in the National Gallery in Oslo. He dropped the piece. Piece was fine. Not a problem. Since that moment, experienced crippling headaches, terrible, terrible feelings, anxiety, seizures. He ended up taking his own life. Right, because the painting was annoyed with him. Apparently so. People have attributed to that, and that is sad. Whatever happened to that person is awful. Uh, Absolutely, very much so. But But. people say when they see the the scream up close, they have a very visceral reaction. Now, is that art? Or is that the the ghost of the scream? No, 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 that's the point of art, (laughs) surely, is to have a visceral reaction. If you have no reaction to a piece of art, (laughs) then what the fuck's the point of a piece of art? (laughs) Um, <laughs> you should have a reaction. You should. Well, you should have a reaction. Yes. E- well, even if it's I hate uh, this is fucking awful. At least is it a reaction yeah. <laughs> to something? Well, we shall discuss this. But that is the story. Those are my art heist stories. I like. I, I that's grand. There you go. Lots of fun stories. Like, art heist are great. Oh, that's grand. Yay! But art, yes, visceral reaction. Yeah. I think you should. If you if you really hate it, then it's done something right. Well, I exactly. Guess. I think that's. I think that's just as valid as a reaction as to absolutely loving something Mm -hmm. because it's elicited an emotional response and that's what you want so before we come back to the cases your thoughts are what favorite type or stuff that really you hate can you can you summarize that have you thought about i mean i'll give you an example Mm. that when i've been to different galleries around the world i i'm more of a classicist i guess modern art certain modern art i really like i hate minimalism I can't stand minimalism. Minim, 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 because minimalism. Because I can't say it. Also, <laughs> um, when I've been in the, I went to the MoMA. Yeah. I've been a couple of times in New York. Wonderful, wonderful gallery. The minimalist bit walked in with, like, I am cold. I am, <laughs> I am bone dry, I tell you. <laughs> but it's a reaction. It's a reaction. It's a yes, reaction. Because so, someone did something yeah. and they tried. Someone did something and they did something that other people mm. absolutely love. Yeah. And amazing. You don't? Absolutely fine. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah but it, it has a reaction. You mm. you feel something from it, even if it is annoyance or <laughs> <laughs> frustration or Murder. A- ang- <laughs> anger or something like that. But it, it elicits a feeling, Yeah, which is what art, what any art, a- any be, art being a picture, do. sculpture, any theater, theater film, whatever, it yeah. should it should elicit a should an emotional a reaction. A st- should start something. a discussion Absolutely. as well. I'm, if you see a bit of art, which is like, yeah, that's bad art, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think um, so. And it doesn't mean that we're right. No, absolutely not. It doesn't not. mean that we're right. You can have a passive reaction to anything. So with no. the art heist in the world, do you think? Do you think there are? Because you mentioned it earlier, people in a castle. Oh, I have no doubt. Several people in one yeah. castle. No, I have. I have absolutely no doubt that there are people. The the, cause the black market for art is huge. So there are there are pieces mm. that are stolen or looted from various places and things that end up in private hands. And I have no doubt there are very rich people who have got rooms in an apartment mm. in New York or London or Dubai or wherever mm. that only they go into because it's got it's got some illicit artwork or something on the wall yeah. type thing. And it reminds me of that scene in the, at the end of the Thomas Crown Affair where he's actually, yeah. he presses a button and he goes up and he's got the, the piece of art that he yeah. stole like on the wall. But only he knows it's there. It's for his, <laughs> it's for his sort of personal enjoyment type this, of thing. This is why I think we would make great art heist <laughs> thieves. Not from the execution, like definitely that. would not, not that. go well because they'd be falling across the forehead and we'd fall over. <laughs> You'd be shoving me in there. It was all her. Yeah, it's all her. I know. <laughs> I do think it would work for us, weirdly, because we are the sort of people, I think-ish, 
we're very happy quietly looking at something beautiful oh, and yeah. just like if it was you and me it's mine and like select others probably tell ben and emma like, well, things no you no things and it gets out that you'd be very strict about that yeah, it no. was you and i like we set up on like just a glass of wine no i don't trust you no. This is where it starts, isn't yeah, it? Then we'd end up killing each no, other. Over the ex- exactly. You tell your husband, and then he'll get something to tell someone else, and then, <laughs> and then, and then the roses will be round. You wouldn't. You liar. You mm. lie like a rug. You would tell someone. You would just get mad at me, and you told five people. <laughs> by the way, come and look at my massive art. <laughs> by the way, it's on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't tell anyone we know. You would just selfie use with it. me in the picture. <laughs> And it's the dark side oh, no, of it, no. is, but the the scream that sold to a certain person, and I will talk about Jeffrey Epstein because he's dead, knew a lot of people. And that is someone with a lot of money who can buy and sell whatever. There are people in that, I'm sure he had huge well, amounts also, of art. Yeah, it's also, isn't this the place in, oh, where is it? It's in Europe somewhere. It's just a, a massive warehouse, basically somewhere. It might be in Switzerland. I think actually. Oh, you just recre- recreated the end of the Brexit no, no. Lost Art. Um, but literally, it is. People will store art there. Yes. Yeah, and, it, and it is, yeah. and it's entirely, entirely secure. And there's pieces of art worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of a million pounds. Yeah. That are just in steel cases, just in a cupboard, in a warehouse mm. somewhere, because it's it's an investment. Yeah. It's it's just oh, I've I've got I've got it type thing I will and reference, that annoys me greatly I will reference another film great film A Good Year it's not a great film but I love it um, A Good Year so it's based okay. <laughs> so it's based on a year in Provence but yes. Ridley Scott directed it Russell Crowe's in it it's basically it's lovely the guy inherits his uncle's estate in Provence it's lovely there's food there's loveliness Marion Cotillard's in it but he is a banker in the city of London and like his big boss is offering a promotion and he's showing him a Van Gogh on the wall. And he's saying like, oh, no, that's a recreation. The real one's in my vault. Yeah. And he says to him, it's so profound, the end of this movie. It's so good. He says to him, how often do you look at it? How often do you look at the real one? And it's, that's yeah, yeah. Like no having it, some, but some people are so happy with just having it. The just, knowledge yeah. that I have no, this I money have this right thing. there. That's a miser, in I a, guess. In a, in a vault somewhere, locked but, away. How could you not want to look at it? I think the guy who stole the Mona Lisa, you'd hope that in, in his apartment he just sat and looked at it. Yeah. And just gone, that's oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Try to improve it. Big, bigger <laughs> smile, bigger happy face. Oh, Jesus, if my granny had been alive, she'd be, no, I can fix that. So there you go. There are some of the famous art heists through like it. history. Different crimes that we do. Unfortunately, no one was murdered in that. No one was murdered. No one was murdered, but we do do captivating Perhaps he was crimes. Hearing, he was hearing a murder. Is that what the perhaps, it was scr- perhaps it was a scream of someone being murdered. I know something that you don't. Yeah. <gasps> oh, that's profound. Yeah. I like that. Someone being murdered. Someone's being murdered. Perhaps the Mona Lisa was a psycho. She was watching someone <laughs> being murdered. And just that little smirk. That little smirk. That no, little smirk. don't, don't. Okay. Oh. I'm watching someone being butchered horribly. <laughs> oh, yes. This, yes. One, this will please me this greatly. This entertains me greatly. <laughs> Cut off the other arm. <laughs> note <laughs> enjoy your art wherever you are go look at those paintings again and have that image in your head but what do you think people what do you think of our exploration of great art highs through history there are so many more but we loved these ones tell us what you think jump on the comments of this episode wherever you listen to us tell us your thoughts your theories your musings what you would do in an art heist how would you perform it what weird daring deeds and methods would you employ and also what art would you steal if you could steal one piece of mm. art, oh, that's a good question. What would you steal? Make sure you weigh in on those comments, Ooh, Nick. I like that. You have any thoughts? Do you need to ruminate on that? Well, I mean, there's art I like, and there's art I all want to buy. Mm. And there's a there's a piece of art at the moment in the sale in Canterbury, which I'm very don't, tempted by. Don't. But I really like it. Which is what is it? The Grayson Perry. The Grayson Perry. I love fucking love Grayson Perry. Just get Grayson Perry. Always buy it because yeah. you love Grayson Perry. And, and like, you keep mm, going back and I forth. I keep on it. going on about it. And then you buy other art and it's shit. <laughs> yeah, I do. I would steal the Starry Night by Van Gogh. Yeah. I could look but then that that's the sort of thing that you can't show people. I don't care. <laughs> you can't go. Would not care. I yeah. don't need anyone else to look at that. That is a piece of art that I could look at it is quietly. A, it is an amazing thing. For just 
just stare at it for yeah. hours. I don't need anyone else with me. That's me. That's and the thing my when time. you need exactly you need a secret room. And um, you, secret, you need a secret room for, for that. many many reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a big big chair and <laughs> big chair big, and big chair and that's it. That's all you need, and a, a big gun. Chair. <laughs> Share your thoughts on what piece of art you would steal if you could. If you haven't already, please consider joining us on Patreon to get more of this stuff. Mm, it's great. Every single week as well as bonus content. If you can, please leave us a review on Apple iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. All reviews really, really help us and other podcasts you listen to. And also send us suggestions of what we can do for our Christmas episode coming it is up. getting there damn quick. It's, it's not long. We would love to know really big stories we haven't covered yet that we can cover for the big day mm. thanks for listening guys we have been the people inside the poisoner's cabinet we will see you next week and remember your loved ones are trying to kill you Bye.